Hi, I'm Michael Malolman, Xenia Applications Engineer at Analog Devices. Selecting the right isolator for high-speed SPI isn't always as simple as choosing one with enough data rate to meet the desired SPI clock speed. You must consider the propagation delay through the isolator because this often limits the SPI speed. For example, a 10 megabit per second optocoupler with 100 nanoseconds propagation delay limits the SPI bus speed to about 2.5 megahertz. To increase the data rate, you can choose an isolator with a low propagation delay, like the ADM1301 with 32 nanoseconds propagation delay. This yields a clock speed three times higher to almost 8 megahertz. Let's take a look why propagation delay limits the speed. With a master, a slave and an isolator in between them, data from the master, shown in blue, is in sync with the rising edge of the clock, shown in red. Both are delayed going through the isolator to the slave side. When the rising edge of the clock is seen by the slave, then the slave outputs its data, shown in green. This slave data then goes through the isolator back to the master side. When the slave data arrives, it must be set up in time for the falling edge of the clock to latch into the master. You can see that the data is delayed twice by the isolator during the half clock period, which means that the propagation delay of the isolator must be less than one fourth of the clock period for the SPI bus to operate without timing errors. To get even higher data rate, here is a solution that allows you to increase the data rate dramatically by taking the isolator propagation delay out of the equation. Data and clock pass through the isolator as before with the same delay. In addition, all that is required is a second register in the master and a fourth isolator channel, such as in the ADUM1402 quad isolator. The idea is to make the clock for the second register sync up with the slave data. To do this, you wrap the master clock back through the isolator so that the slave data is in sync with the delayed clock when it gets to the master side of the isolator. The delayed clock is then used to latch the data into the master with no timing errors. As you can see, the two registers in the master are latched by different clocks and do not have to be in sync with each other. This is effective as long as the channel-to-channel -channel prop delay matching is good, because optocouplers are 8 times worse than the ADUM1402. This trick is not for them. Thanks for watching this video. For more information please visit analog.com/icoupler.